Shabrecha. Okay, Rabotai, Chodesh Tov Muorach. We have something of a uh, very interesting style shiur tonight. And I'm hoping that will be Me'oreros to an incredible month. Kedarkenu Bakodesh. We'll start with a Beracha. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohenu Melech Haolam Shahakol Niya Bidvaro. Rosh Chodesh Adar. We finish Shovavim and we enter one of the happiest months of the year. Mishinichnas Adar, Marbim Besimcha. I'd like to share with you tonight a share that many of the Mar Mekomot were taken from the Sefer Magid Harakia, from Yedidi Ahuvi Ben Ashi, Rabbi Daniel Gladstein. Shem should bless him. Somebody very special in Klal Yisrael, a very close friend of, of ours and of mine personally. We should be zochet tonight with this particular share to get into what this great month has in store. We should nichnas adar marbim b'simcha. Rabotai, listen to this. The Gemara tells us, Amar Reb Yehuda b'shmeh the Rav Shmuel Bar Shilat Mishmei the Rav. Did you hear that? Reb Yehuda, the son of Reb Shmuel, the son of Shilat. Very interesting name, Shilat. If you've ever heard this name before. He said in the name of Rav. Amazing. What did he say? Kishem Shem Nichnas Av Mimaatin Besimcha. The same way that when the month of Av begins, we are mimaet, we lessen our happiness and joy. Kach mishnechnas adar marbin besimcha. So too, in the same measure, that when Adar begins, the month of Adar ushers us to make much more our joy and simcha of the coming month. Tonight is the night of Rosh Chodesh Adar. Tonight is the night that we're marbim b'simcha. And this simcha is going to last us an entire month. And it's also going to be the entry to the month of Nisan, which is a month of Geulah. Without the simcha, you can't come to a Geulah. Mishnechnas Adar marbim b'simcha. Now, who was the rabbi that said this? Now, this is an interesting idea. Not too often do we actually look into the name of the rabbi. Rather, more often, we look into what he said. We look into the statement. And the statement is that just like in the month of Av, we lessen our happiness. In the month of Adar, as it begins tonight, we're marbe b'simcha. We make our happiness much more, much more joyful. But let's take a minute and do something not typical. Let's look into the name of the rabbi who said this. Is there a connection between the rabbi who speaks and what he says? Tonight I want to touch upon this incredible idea. Generally we just take it as a given. This is the rabbi who said it. What does he say? Let's look into it. But not often do we look into who said what and why him over anyone else. Take a look at this name. Let's analyze. Amar Reb Yehuda, Bere the Reb Shmuel Bar Shilat. Who was this rabbi? 
he was Reb Yehuda, the son of Reb Shmuel Bar Shilat. Now we asked before, what type of name is Shilat? Who've ever heard of a name like Shilat before until this Gemara came around? Interesting. And who was this rabbi, Reb Shmuel Bar Shilat, that his son tells us something in the name of the great Rav? And by the way, what is he saying? What is he telling us? Mishinichnas Adar Marbim Bisimcha. Very interesting. The Gemara tells us this very Rava. Rava is the one that taught us. The month of Adar begins where joy, tremendous happiness. The Gemara Megillah tells us Rava, Amar, Chayav Adam Libsume, Bipuraya, Adaloyada. When Purim comes, I think this is a Gemara that everyone's mehaderin. Everyone knows this Gemara. Matter of fact, they know it so well, they made a song out of it. So, to the extent that Rava was the one who taught us, that when Purim comes, Chayav Adam, a person is obligated to drink to the extent of Ad Delo Yada, that extent that he doesn't know the difference between Baruch Mordechai and Arur Hanman, which means the incredible mitzvah to become intoxicated on the day of Purim to such an extent that he doesn't know the difference between Baruch Mordechai and Arur Haman. Interesting. Rava was the one that told us, Mishinichnas Adar Marbim Bisimcha. Rava is the one who tells us that when it comes for Purim, there's a chiyuv to drink and get drunk to the extent that you don't know the difference between Baruch Mordechai Arur Haman. It's interesting. Rava, Rava really has a connection to this incredible month. We're going to see in a minute that specifically when it comes to anything to do with wine, the Baal HaMemra and Shas is always the same rabbi. It's always Rava. Rava is the one who teaches us that when it comes time for Purim, you got to drink until you're drunk. Here's another Gemara. Gemara Pesachim. Gemara says that Rava on Erev Pesach, he used to drink so much wine that it would actually open his appetite. And it would whet his appetite to such an extent so that when it comes the night of Pesach, he'll be so hungry that he'll come to the mitzvah de oraita of the eating of matzah with such an appetite that he'll fulfill this incredible de oraita mitzvah with the umpteenth greatest degree of the Hidur, with such a hunger, with such a geshmak, that he would come to the mitzvah hungry. So here we are again, Rava, who drank and drank and drank wine on Erev Pesach in order to open the appetite for the night of Pesach so that he can eat matzah with an incredible appetite. Wine, Rava. Gemar Pesachim, Erev Pesach, when it came to the mitzvah of matzah, Wine, Rava. We're not done. I'll give you a third Gemara, Yuma. The Gemara over there in Ayin Vav, Amud Bet tells us, Yain Yisamach Levav Enosh. Amar Rava. You hear this? Zacha Misameho. Lo Zacha Eno Misameho. If the guy is Zoyche, if he uses the wine properly, Meaning that he's not a drunk chas v'shalom. But he realized that the magnificence of the beautiful uh, kochot of wine and the shevach of wine is that it was meant to raise up a person in the way of upgrading mitzvot. We use a cup of wine by a chupa. We use a cup of wine by brit milah. We use a cup of wine on Shabbat. Although the diorite of Shabbat is really Zachor v'shamor bedibur echad. It was always bedibur. We're supposed to go and be Mekadesh Shabbat with words. The rabbis came along and gave us a cup of wine to say the words of Shabbat 
on a cup of wine because wine is mishubah and everything that's done on a cup of wine is upgraded to be mishubah as well. So when I come to tell you to say the beautiful words of Kiddush on Shabbat, do it on a cup of wine so that it'll upgrade the Kiddushat Shabbat and the Zachor Mishamor with wine, which is mishubah. Chatan and Kala on a cup of wine which is Meshubach, so it'll upgrade the Nisuin, Brit Milah, a cup of wine, so that it'll upgrade the Mitzvat Milah. Now it's Meshubach, because it's done on a cup of wine. Zacha Misamecho. If you zochet to understand the greatness, how wine is Meshubach, and how it raises us up to Kiddush Hashem, you'll be zochet Misamecho. It'll give him the proper Simcha. Lo zacha, but if the guy thinks that wine is just here to get him high, ain't no misamecha. That's not real happiness. It's a hangover, but it's not happiness. Again, who's the Baal Memra? Round three when it comes to wine? Rava. It's amazing. And this is something that's pointed out again and again. There was a great tzaddik. He was a mikubal, Rebbe Avram Chizkuni. He's the one that points out many places in Shas that any time a memra which speaks about wine is always said by none other than Rava himself. What's the connection between Rava and wine? When it comes to Purim, Rava tells you, get drunk on wine. Adelo yada. Erev Pesach, drank wine so we can do the mitzvah of matzah. Appreciate wine's mishubach, but use it for the right reasons. Rava is always about the connection with wine. What does Rava have to do with wine? Rabbi Tai, listen to this amazing idea. It says Rabbi Avram Chizkuni in the name of the Arizal HaKadosh. A secret, a sod. You heard about someone by the name of Lot, I'm sure. You remember Lot? Abraham Avinu, Lot. Well, it turns out that Lot, if you've watched, you've seen that many times he has this interesting mazal. He was on the brink of getting killed. Somehow or other, trouble, danger always followed Lot. First, he gets kidnapped by the four kings. You remember that. And then at the last minute, Abraham Avinu comes, saves him. Abraham Avinu, with his Evid Eliezer, they take on the four kings, miraculous miracles. He picks up the sand, he throws it into the air, it turns into arrows, it turns into spears. We remember the amazing Medrashim. Abraham Avinu saves Lot, breaks him out from captivity, and brings him back. At the last minute, Lot is saved. Here we go again. Lot goes down to Sodom. The city of Sodom, destined to be destroyed. At the last second, who's saved from the city of Sodom? Lot. By who? The angels. Here we go again. Lot's in danger, about to be killed. Last second, he's saved in a nick of time. What is the zechut that Lot had? To constantly be saved at the last second. So the Pasha Pshat is, is that the Zechut was Abraham Avinu. But the Arizal says a different Pshat. Al Pi Kabbalah, he says, and he's Megaletas, that Lot was saved all these times because he's connected to the Amora Rava. Very interesting. There's a connection between Lot. And Rava, Rava and the Gemara, the Amora. What's the connection, Bichlal? Says the Arizal, the Neshama of Rava was connected to the Neshama of Lot. Now, does this mean that going way back to the beginning when Adam Arishon sinned, and we've spoken about this many times, we even have a name for this. It's called the uh, Shevi Nishamot. We've spoken about this in the past, where Adam Arishon was told he's not allowed to eat from the Etzadat. Turns out that Chava was tricked, seduced by the snake, 
and now she gets her husband to eat from the forbidden as well. The minute Adam Arishon took from the forbidden and ate from that forbidden fruit, whatever it was, the minute the evil entered the body of Adam Arishon, Adam Arishon was the embodiment and the master neshama of all the future neshamot of Klal Yisrael. The minute the evil entered on the inside of Adam Arishon after he ate from the forbidden, the Yetzer Hara got access to the neshama of Adam. Which remember, that neshama is the master neshama of all future neshamot of Klal Yisrael. And that gave the dark side an ability to grab and steal many of the great future neshamot of Klal Yisrael. And he took those neshamot, Yetzer Hara, and he took them in captivity. Some of them he hid in places on earth that nobody would ever expect or even think to look for. When we had that incredible share on Dina, who fell to the hands of Shechem ben Chamor, over there we explained that Kibita Ima, just like the daughter, so to the mother, so to the daughter. The mother, Le'ah, was the type of person that went out and got Nishamot, so to Dina went out to bring back Nishamot to Klal Yisrael. And when she went into the city of Shechem, it wasn't Stam to go touring, but she was actually going on a reconnaissance mission. She was going to find a specific Nishama that was entrapped in the city of Shechem, which later on we were Megaleh from the Psukim. Rechavat Yadaim, said the Pasuk, Shechem ben Chamor. Rechabat was Rashi Tevot, Rebi Chanina ben Tradion. That was the Nishama that she brought back to the Jewish people. One in Nishamot that were stolen from the time of the sin of Adam Arishon, placed in a very evil place, a man by the name of Shechem ben Chamor, where Mama, she was called the Chivi, which is the Lashon of Nachash. So many of these great rabbis, future Nishamot, were grabbed away by the sin of Adam Arishon, and they were kind of taken captive. Many of these Nishamot we got back by Matan Torah, Moshe Rabbeinu, we say the Mizmor, Alita Lamarom, Shavita Shevi, Lakachta Matanot Ba'adam. What does that mean? Moshe Rabbeinu goes up to heaven, and after he struggled with the angels and won them over, the angels gave him presents. What were the presents that Moshe Rabbeinu got back and brought down with the Torah on Har Sinai? You know who those presents were? Shevi, Shavita, Shevi. Shavita means captives, kidnapped Nishamot. Shavita, Shevi. Shevi were the Shavita Nishamot, the Nishamot that were kidnapped. By who? By the Nahash, by the Yetzer Hara from the beginning of time. And who were these Nishamot? We said, Shevi, Reb Shlomo ben Yitzchaki, Rashi. Shevi, Rabbi Israel Baal Shem Tov. Shevi, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yo Chai. All these names are Rashi Tevot. Shevi, Shin Bet Yud. Shimon Bar Yo Chai. Could you imagine if we wouldn't have got these Neshamot back? We got back Rashi on Matan Torah. We got back Rajbi on Matan Torah. We got Rabbi Israel Baal Shem Tov on Matan Torah, and many others. These were the captured Nishamot that were taken from the time of Adam Arishon. And some of those Nishamot weren't captured and placed in heaven, they were placed on earth. And it could be that Rava was one of the Nishamot that were captured. And he was placed in Sidom. And he was placed by Lot. So the reason why Lot kept getting saved is because somehow his neshama, says the Arizal, was connected to the neshama of Rava. I'm talking about the Amora, Rava, Abai of Rava, right? We're talking about Rava. And because Lot and his daughters were under the impression 
that the whole world was destroyed. And his daughters actually thought, L'shem Shamayim, that they were the only women left in the world. And their father was the only man left. And they said to themselves, how is there going to be the continuation of a world if there isn't going to be an offspring? So what did they do to their father that night? They gave him to drink. They got him drunk. They got him drunk. And they cohabitated with him. And yes, it was an act of terrible, terrible abomination. I don't know else how to put it. But they thought they were doing L'shem Shamayim. They really thought that the only shot that the world had to continue to propagate was only through them because they thought the whole world was destroyed outside of them and their father. So because wine was misused through Lot and his daughters, who Lot was connected to Rava, therefore Rava is going to be the Amora in Gemara to teach you how to properly use wine to fix the fact that he was connected to Lot at the time that wine was misused. And therefore later on, he's going to be the rabbi that any time there's something important to teach you about wine, he's the one that to set it straight. This is the why wine should be used. To bring a tikkun to the fact that he was connected to Lot when wine was completely misused. Amazing. Yain Isamah Levav Enosh Amar Rava Zacha Misamecho Lo Zacha Eno Misamecho Make sure you use the wine right because no one else can tell you better than me, says Rava, the way wine was used wrong. You know when you should get drunk? Not like what I had to go through when I was stuck to Lot, when his daughters got him drunk for the sake of something that was an abomination. No! The way wine should be used to get someone drunk is in the way of a mitzvah. Ad lo yada ben Haman Mordechai. This is amazing. And this is the reason why every member in Shas that tells you something big about wine, who's the rabbi that tells it to you? Rava. Did you ever think about that? We always learned Gemara. We thought, is there a connection between the rabbi and the statement that he's saying? We thought it was, you know, uh, this is the rabbi who said it. Not that there was a reason why this is the rabbi that's going to be the chosen one to say specifically this statement. Look how Torah is. Look how incredible the Dvar Hashem is. That every line in Torah has meaning. It has history. It has depth. Not only is this the rabbi who said that statement, but there's a reason why this rabbi needs to say this statement and no other rabbi. Because by this rabbi teaching you this statement, he's fixing a tikkun to something he was connected to that this statement will fix that was might have been messed up in prior or previous times in history. Look at Rava fixing that terrible mess of Lot and his daughters through wine. So he's the Baal Memra of Yayin. Wow, that's amazing. Psh, let's take that in for a minute. I wish I had some wine. Now this, this would be the right class. This is the L'chaim moment. I, all I got is water, guys. Well, you thought this was Ara. You thought this, <laughs> that's what you thought. Amazing. And I'll show it to you in the Pasuk. There's an incredible remez that the Arizal brings to prove to you that Lot was connected to the Neshama Rava. And could be that the Neshama Rava was hidden 
in the city of Sodom by the Nachash, by Lot, so that no one will find him. The Pasuk says, Vayikhu et Lot ve'et rechusho ben achi Abraham. Says the Arizal, Vayikhu et Lot, they took Lot. But you know who else they took? Ve'et rechusho ben achi, Rashi Tevot Rava. Again, Vayikhu, who did they take? Plural. So it sounds like et lot vet rechusho ben achi Abraham. That's what the Pazuk says. No, says the Arizal. It's not the way to read it. Vayikhu, you know who they took? They took et lot vet rechusho ben achi Rashi Tevot Rava. They took lot with Rava because they were connected. Which Rava? The Rava of Abraham. The one that's going to be the descendant of Abraham Avinu, Abaya Varava, who was stuck to Lot, who was stuck in Sodom, who the reason why every time Lot was saved was in the Zechut of the Neshama that was connected to him, the great Amora that's going to come out later on, Rava, but because he was stuck to him at the time of the promiscuous act, dealt with wine. So Rava is going to have to be the one to teach Klal Yisrael how to properly use wine. So every time in Shas, we tell you something powerful about the right usage of wine, mitzvot with wine, using of wine, even getting drunk the right way through wine. Who is it? Rava. This is the way I'm going to fix the act of Lot and his daughters. Wow, that's incredible. It's off the charts. <laughs> So Rabotai, now that we're getting warmed up, let's get into the big stuff. Here we go. So here's the month that Al Yidei the Yain Chayiv Adam Libsume Ad Delo Yada until until Mamash. He doesn't know the difference between Baruch Mordechai Arur Haman. This is the month that we use every possibility, every technique, and every stepping stool to bring us. To a true Mechiat Amalek. This is the month that we wipe Haman out. We wipe Amalek out. Let's get this clear. There are two parashiyot in Torah that talk about Mechiat Amalek. Parashat B'Shalach and Parashat Kitetze. Right guys? Two times in Torah that it talks about wiping out the nation of Amalek. Parashat B'Shalach Parashat ki tetze. In Parashat B'Shalach, how many psukim talk about Mechiat Amalek? Well, you take a look at the end, all the way at the end of Parashat B'Shalach, and there are nine psukim, which by the way, you should know this. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why this is so, this is so chashuv. Because typically, typically, we need at least ten psukim. Over here, it's one of the exceptions that nine psukim is already enough to be its own reading. Well, it's each aliyah I'm talking about. So, Bishalach at the end, nine pesukim. Nine pesukim that talks about Mechiat Amalek. At the end of Parashat Kitetse, how many pesukim? Three pesukim. Very interesting. So, altogether, how many pesukim do you have in Torah that talk about Mechiat Amalek? Twelve pesukim, right? Nine in Bishalach. And three in Parashat Ki that all talk about wiping out Amalek. Twelve psukim in Torah. How many words are in those psukim? Now let's get this. This is interesting. In the Noi psukim of Bishalach, if you want to sit down and count, teaches us the Bal HaRokeach that in those nine psukim, there are 119 words. In the three psukim of Parashat Ki there are 47 words. Altogether, how many words does the Torah use to describe the concept of wiping out Amalek? 166 words in the Torah telling you, wipe out Amalek. Says the Balarokeach, just like the Torah uses 160 words to tell you, wipe out Amalek. So too, Migilat Esther is 166 psukim. Did you 
you hear that? Megillat Esther is 166 psukim keneged the 166 words that the Torah uses to tell you about Mechiat Amalek. Every pasuk in Megillat Esther corresponds to another word in the Torah of Mechiat Amalek. That's genius. That's Rebbe Lezer Garmaiza. That was the Bal HaRokeach. He figured this one out. How did he figure this one out? I don't know. But I'm just telling you that this is genius. He figured out that the 166 psukim in Megillat Esther corresponds to the 166 words that the Torah uses to describe you having an obligation to wipe out Amalek. Crazy. The Torah is brilliant. And then when we take a good look, we'll see. Now, when you see the Torah talk about Mechiat Amalek, the Torah tells us very, very interesting pasuk. Ktov zot zikaron basefer. Right? That's what Hashem says. Hashem tells him, tells Moshe Rabbeinu, Ktov zot zikaron basefer. Vesim beozne Yehoshua. Interesting. There's two sides to this. Ktov zot zikaron basefer. That means write it down. Write it down. What should you write down? What well, I'm about to tell you now, to wipe out Amalek. So when it comes to wiping out Amalek, there's two chalakim. There's ktov zot, write it down. Right? There's the mechiat Amalek of what we would call Torah shebichtav. V'sim be'oznei Yehoshua. And say it, whisper it in the ear. Put it in the ear of Yehoshua. That's the Torah Shebaal Peh. There are two parts of Mechiat Amalek. There's the Torah Shebichtav and there's the Torah Shebaal Peh of Mechiat Amalek. What does that mean? So I want to share with you a beautiful Hidush of the great Rebbe Hanan Wasserman. Zechet Sadiq Lebracha Sha'akadosh Baruch Hu Yimkom Damo Yimkom Damo He was murdered by the Nazis. We should be able to meet the great Rebbe Hanan Bibiata Goel. He says such a beautiful pshat. He was a Talmud Muvak of Rabbi Chaim Briska. He was also a Talmud Muvak of the Hafez Chaim. He was very special. Rabbi Hanan was something out of this world. Listen to this, guys. Rabbi Hanan tells us in the Kobetz Ma'amari, he says, if you take a look, the Torah, when it describes Amalek, and you wiping it out, there's two Lishonot that seem to be very different from each other. In one place it says, Ki macho emche et zecher amalek. But in the other part it says, Timche et zecher amalek. What is the difference between macho emche and timche et zecher amalek? It says Rabbi Chana, there's a big difference. When Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Macho emche, wipe out, I will wipe out. It's talking about Hashem wiping out Amalek. Hashem says, I'm going to do it. But in the other parsha, He tells us, You, Klal Yisrael, Timche et Zecher Amalek. You go out and wipe out. Wait one second, who's supposed to do it? Who's supposed to do it? Hashem's supposed to do it. We're supposed to do it. We're both supposed to do it. It's interesting. Did you ever? Were you ever aimed on that difference in the lashon? Macho emche. Hashem says, "I will wipe them out." And then He tells us, "Timchet zechra malek." You wipe them out. Wait one second. Who's doing it? We're doing it. You're doing it. We're doing it together. We're taking turns. Well, what's going on here? Listen to this unbelievable Rebbe Chana. Rebbe Chana in the in the Kobetz Ha'arot, and brought again in the Kobetz Ma'amarim, something beautiful. He says this amazing pshat, amazing pshat. And when I first heard this pshat, I was taken. He brings in the name of the Ramban, that when the Pasuk describes Amalek, it says over there, Velo Yare Elokim. They had no fear 
of God. When they came to attack us, right after Kriyat Yamsuf, they had no fear of God. What does God have to do with this? Says the Ramban, listen to this, the entire hatred that Amalek had towards the Jewish people was only a way to show their real fight against God. Forgive me for a second, because of course, the minute I speak about Amalek, the Yitzhara kicks in. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's all right. We know you're here. We know you're here. We know you're here. We can acknowledge you. Okay? Now leave, leave us alone. Bear with me just for a minute. Sorry, guys. Okay. Listen to this chidush. Unbelievable chidush. When all the... Ah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I know, I know what I'm talking about. Over the years, any time I spoke about the Yitzhahara Amalek, something, the lights go out, the shortage in the building, the cameras go off, there's always something. I, 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 I've, I've watched this a million times, just very on, because we have so many bars of, uh, what's it called here? It's a pale why this would happen. Let's see. Maybe I know you're on my side. Okay. Says the Ramban, right after Kriyat Yamsuf, Shamu Amim Yergazun. All the nations of the world shook in fear, but not so much just of Klal Yisrael. They got sh shaken in fear of Hashem. This was the Hashem that brought down Paro, gave him the ten makot, washed away the superpower of Egypt in the ocean. The entire world was shaking from Bore Olam. When Amalek came running to fight us, in spite of everyone else's fear, it wasn't that they were coming after us for our money. It wasn't that they were coming after us for our land. We had no land. We were in the Midbar. They were coming after us because we were their only connection to Hashem. Really, says Rabbi Hanan, Amalek, if it was up to them, they would build a ladder and they would try to go up and fight Bore Olam in any which way they can. But they know they can't. So the only human, natural, earthly way to reach a fight, a war on God is His children, us. So their hatred for us is only a hechetimsa to bring their ability to their real hatred, which is against Hashem. Unbelievable. This is, this is something... What, what, a, what a pshat. They came to attack us in order to really try to wage war on God. And the only way they found to do that was only by being able to come after us because we're the closest to Asha. Says Rebbe Hanan, and the Malbim says something al Derech Zeh as well, which is amazing. He says, on the outside, it looks like that their hatred for us is unbelievable. And it is unbelievable, but it's not for us per se. It's through us what they're really looking to accomplish. 
because they realized that if they would be able to build a ladder to heaven, they would. But because they can't fight Hashem directly, so they're going to attack us to try to fight Him indirectly. This is an amazing idea. And therefore, the Torah says, Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, two there's two parts of fighting Amalek. Macho emche. Hashem says, destroy, I am going to destroy them. Because really they're after me. But they're attacking you in order to get to me. And therefore, I'm giving you a chiv to fight them on my behalf. Timched zecher amalek. You go out and fight them on the outside because they're trying to get to me on the inside. Wow, what an what a, what a, what a unbelievable pshat. What a mahalach. He says, this is the pshat. Moshe Rabbeinu was warned. Ktov zot basefer. But the sim ba'oznei Yoshua. On the outside, ktov zot basefer. Yeah, macho emche. But the sim ba'oznei Yoshua, tell him the truth. That the reason why they're coming after you is really because they want to get me. There's two parts to this. There's the real thing they want, and there's the war they wage, because that's the only way they see they can get to a war against Hashem. This is incredible. This is, this is unbelievable. And if this is the case, Rabotai, think about this for a minute. The Ben Shai tells us, Ben Shai tells us, Kiya al Kesya. What does that mean, Kiya al Kesya? So Rashi already there by Makom explains. Kiya al Kesya, Amalek, with his despicable chutzpah, when attacking us, accomplished that Kiya, Yud Ke, was separated from Vav Ke. Al Kesya, what's Kes? Kes was really kise, Hashem's kise akavod. But they came and somehow they actually were pogem in the kise akavod, where now the kise is no longer kise, it's kes. The chaf and the samach was separated from the aleph, the way the yud and the ke was separated from the vav and the ke. By the way, Rabotai, this is the reason. According to most Mefarshim, if you know that famous Tosafot and Dav Gimel and Mesech Berachot that brings in, this, in the name of the Machzor Mivitri, he says the words Amen, Yehe Sheme Rabba Mevorach. What are we saying? Yehe, it should be Sheme. What Sheme? Shem Yud Ke Mevorach. What it should be? Rabba Mevarach. It should be complete. We should bring back the name of Yudke to be in its completion. Yudke Vavke. That's why when a person says, Yeheshme Rabba Mevarach, he's supposed to be thinking in his mind that we should be Moche and Macho and Pe at Zechamalek. We're supposed to have in mind when we say Amen Yesh Merabah that we are bringing together the Yud K with the Vav K to undo the damage that Amalek did. Kiya al Kesya. They hit the Yud K, separated from the Vav K. So you know what we do, Klai Yisrael? Amen Yeheshme Rabbah Mevarach. Let the, let the name Shme, Shem Yudke be finally Rabbah. It should be complete. It should be back accompanied with the Vavke. So every Amen Yeheshme Rabbah attacks Amalek. It's a form of Mechilat, Mechiat Amalek. That's an unbelievable idea. Because that's what Amalek did. He took away the Aleph from Kiseh and made it Kes. He took away the Vav Ke from Yud Ke and made it Ya. Ki Ya Al Kes Ya. 
He took away the Aleph, the Vav, and the He. Says the Ben Ishchai, that's what it says. Aleph Vav Ke. Ki Bachar Hashem Mitzion. Iva. Aleph Vav Ke. Ki Bachar Hashem Tzion. When Hashem is going to be Bocher B'Tzion, when He's going to bring us back Mashiach, and He wipes out Amalek, you know what we're going to get back? Iva. Aleph to the Kiseh, Vav Ke to the Yud Ke. Iva L'Moshav Lo. We're going to get back to Iva, the Aleph Vav Ke, where now the Aleph is going to go back to Kes and make it Kiseh, so God's Kiseh will be Shalem. And the Yah will be finally accompanied back with the Vavke. So now Hashem's name will be Rabba Mevarach. It'll be Shalem. Unbelievable. This is what Amalek did. And this is what we fight against in the month of Adar. Wow. This is amazing. And if this is the case, Rabotai, I just want to share with you something. And then we'll bring this home to that amazing Gemara we started with, and I'm hoping that the ending will really get you. We know that Megillat Esther was written by Ruach HaKodesh, like the Gemara in Mesechet Megillah tells us. Esther, says the Gemara, Beruach HaKodesh Ne'emra. I want to ask you a question. How many times is the name of Haman mentioned in Megillat Esther? So if you take a look, you'll see 54 times. 54 times Haman is mentioned in Megillat Esther. It's like the Pasuk that says, Vegam et asher ya'avodu dan anochi. Dan, 54. Haman was mentioned 54 times. But don't worry, I'm going to judge him. 54 is mibchinat din. Dan, 54. Din, judgment. Yes. He represented the judgment of Hashem. He was the stick to get Klal Yisrael to do Teshuvah. Therefore, he's mentioned 54 times. But don't worry. The Gamet HaGoya is a... This guy ain't getting away with murder. I guarantee you that. The Gamet HaGoya is a... Don't think he's getting away with it. He's mentioned 54 times because he's going to be donned. We're going to don him. Don Anochi. Don't worry. I'm going to get him. Don't think he's going to get away. Unbelievable. How many times was Esther Hamalka mentioned in the Megillah? Okay, so Haman, we said, was mentioned 54 times. How many times was Esther mentioned in the Megillah Esther? If you count, you'll see Esther is also mentioned 54 times. Amazing. You know why? Because Esther is Anochi. Aster, Aster, Panay, Miken. She's the Anochi in Hester. And we just got finished saying, the Gamet Agoy Azeh Asher Yavodu Dan Anochi, Anochi Aster Aster Panai. So the Dan, which is Haman 54, and the Anochi, which is Esther, Hester Panim 54. Zeh Le'umat Zeh. That's incredible. How many times was Zeresh mentioned in the uh, Megillah? Well, it's amazing. Rosh Chodesh Adar started. We're already saying Purim Torah. How, <laughs> how many times was Zeresh mentioned in the, in, the, in the Megillah? So if you take a look, you'll see she was mentioned four times. So if you take Haman, which is 54 times, and his wife, four times. Sachakol is 58 times altogether. And that's the amount of times that Mordechai is mentioned in the Megillah 58 times. Keneged, Haman, and Zeresh. Unbelievable. Beruach HaKodesh Nemra. Every detail was perfectly and geniusly placed. Now you want to hear a beauty? How many times did we say Haman was mentioned in the Megillah? 54 times. Done. Psh, amazing. Comes the Swarim and says, Macho Emche. Emche is gematria 54. And therefore, Haman is mentioned 54 times to show you that Hashem says, Macho, I'm going to wipe him out. And I'm going to show you that it was me that brought down Haman by mentioning him. How many times did I mention him in Megillah? 
emche amount of times, 54 amount of times, in order to show you that I was the one that was macho emche et zecher amalek haman, amaleki agagi, I was the one that wiped them out. Gematria emche, that's the amount of times he's going to be written in the Megillah. If you take the Bnei Haman, the whole Bnei Haman, how many letters in the names of all Bnei Haman? 54 letters. Gematria emche. Not only was I emche the father 54 times, I was emche the Bnei Haman with the 54 letters in their names to show you macho emche et zechama. Hashem says, I did my side. Now, you Klal Yisrael, Timche et Zecher Amalek. They're after you because they're after me. Psst, this quite is unbelievable. This is too much. It's unbelievable. Rabbi Tai, listen to me. Here's the big ending. Here's the fireworks. You ready for this? Let's call it a night. But this is, this is something. Some of us who pray in the Sidurim of Nusach Svart, or even the Svaradi Sidurim, Api Kabbalah, we ended up finding out, especially on Rosh Chodesh, that there is 12 different combinations of the name Yud Kei Vav Kei. And those 12 different combinations correspond to the 12 months of the year. And each month corresponds to a different combo of the letters of Yud Kei Vav Kei and how it's set up and spelled. And each month you're supposed to be mechaven on that combination of the Yud Kei Vav Kei that corresponds to the incoming incumbent month. Okay. So the month of Nisan. What is the combination of Yud Kei Vav Kei? Well, that's an easy one. The combination of the month of Nisan is Yud Kei Vav Kei. It is literally the name of Hashem, straight and clear, straightforward. You know why? Because the month of Nisan is the month that the Gilui of Bore Olam is the most opened and clear. It is straight, it is forward, it is opened, it's in order, it's perfect. That's why. That's the month of Galut, Ashkina, the end of Galut. That's Geula month. And therefore, the name that corresponds to Nisan is Mamish Yud Kei Vav Kei. How about the combination of Yud Kei Vav Kei corresponding to Adar? <laughs> it's exactly the opposite. Adar is the combination of Yud Kei Vav Kei backwards. He Vav, He Yud. That's the month of Adar. It's Yud Kei Vav Kei backwards, or maybe in a different term. It's Yud Kei Vav Kei Behester. It's Yud Kei Vav Kei in the hidden. Nisan is Yud Kei Vav Kei Galui. Adar, Yud Kei Vav Kei Hester. Esther Hamalka, the month of Adar. Megillat Esther, the month of Adar. The month of Hester Panim, the month of Galut, of darkness. But this is what the play of the game was all about. Haman knew all combinations of Hashem's name. He was a sorcerer like nobody else. Haman was fighting a game of names the way he was fighting against Klal Yisrael. And this is the reason why Haman, he feared no month greater than the month of Nisan. And by the way, Rabotai, you know which month Haman was hung? Or hanged is the proper English term. He, he was, he, there is no, you can hang a picture, hung up, but not a man. A person, he was hanged in the month of Nisan. He feared the month of Nisan. Because that was open Gilu Shechina. Haman says, I can't go up, I can't go up against opened Shechina. That's why Haman loved the month of Adar. Adar was the month of Hashem's name, the Hester. Hashem is hidden in that month. It's Yud Kei Vav Kei backwards. It's Hey Vav Hey Yud. That's the month that Haman says, Dad, 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 then I can get you. Because then Hashem is really, really, really in the hidden. When Hashem's in the hidden, I can get you people. 
And this is the reason why. Take a look. It's unbelievable. Haman threw out the Megillah in his words. What does Haman say? V'chol zeh enenu shoveh li. Take a look at these words. Zeh enenu shoveh li. Sofet tevot he vav he yud. Yud ke vav ke backwards. Says Haman. You know what my power is? V'chol zeh enenu shoveh li. Hey, Vav, hey, Yud. As long as Hashem's name is backwards, I can get you. As long as it's Hester Pani. But on the other hand, although he was pushing for Hashem's name backwards, for the Hester Panim comes Esther Hamalka, and she's crying out for Hashem's name forwards, for the open Gilushchina of the Yeshua. What does Esther Hamalka say? Yavo Hamelech Vehaman Rashe Tevot Yud Ke Vav Ke. So Haman is spelling God's name backwards, trying to keep Hashem in the hiding. Esther is spelling Hashem's name forwards, trying to bring out Rachmanut for Klal Yisrael in order to bring a Gilush China for Yeshua. She's pushing for the month of Nisan. He's pushing for the month of Adar. She makes the party in the month of Nisan. We all know that the party of Esther started on Yud Gimel Nisan, going straight into the first day of Pesach, which was the day that Haman was hanged. But Haman was pushing for Hipil Pur Huagoral, which was the month of Adar. He's pushing for Hevav Heyud. She's pushing for Yud Kevavke. Mamish, you see it in the Psukim. It's unbelievable. Rabbi I want to ask you Do you know that there's an amazing Gemara in Sanhedrin, Sadivava Mulbet? The Gemara tells us that the grandchildren of many of the Rishayim later on were Megayer to Klal Yisrael became Geret Tzedek, and even great men. As an example, the Gemara over there in Sanhedrin tells us, Mibne banav shal Sancheriv, the butcher! Sancheriv, the butcher! But Bne banav, his great-grandchildren, Limdu Torah Berabim. They not only became part of Klal Yisrael, they became Gedolim, who taught Torah in public. And says the Gemara, Umanhu, and who are they? Who are the great grandchildren of the butcher son Cheriv? Shemaya Vabtalion. Would you believe that? The Gidole Ador came from this Russia. Unbelievable. And then the Gemara goes on to say, not just San Cheriv, Umbibne Banav Shel Haman, the grandchildren of Haman Harasha, Limdu Torah, Lamdu rather Torah. Bibnei Brak. They make a lot of jokes about this, but now's not the time. Lamdu Torah Bibnei Brak. But the Gemara doesn't tell you who they are. The grandchildren of Sancheriv, it tells you. They pull off the mask and they say, and guess who it was? Shmayev Abtalion. But when it comes to the grandchildren of Haman, the Gemara does not tell you. All it tells you is they learnt, they became great rabbis, learning Torah and Bnei Brak. But it doesn't say who. But the En Yaakov on this Gemara tells us the secret that the Gemara doesn't tell us. The En Yaakov tells us, Bnei Banav Shel Haman, Lamdu, actually Limdu Torah Bnei Brak. And then the En Yaakov says, Umanihu. And who are they? Who's the great-grandchildren of Haman that ended up teaching Torah in Bnei Brak? Umaniu, says the En Yaakov, Reb Shmuel Bar Shilat. He was the great-grandson of Haman Harasha, the rabbi that we started the class with, the rabbi that said, in the name of Rav, do you know, you hear this, this is unbelievable, do you know who is the rabbi that gave us the most famous, famous entry statement 
to the month of Adar, the statement that gets us warmed up for the coming of the great holiday of Purim. You know who the rabbi is? The rabbi is the great grandson of Haman. He's the one that said in the name of Rav, Mishinichnas Adar, Marbim Bismcha, Umanihu, Reb Shmuel Bar Shilat. What did it, tell us a little bit something about this Reb Shmuel Bar Shilat? What was he all about? What did he do for a living? So it's very interesting. You know, leave it up to Rabbi Gladstein. He finds the goods. The Gemara Batra tells us on Davchet Amud Bet that one time Rav was walking in the garden and he ends up meeting the rabbi, Reb Shmuel Bar Shilat. And he says, Reb Shmuel Bar Shilat, you are milamde tinokot shobet rabban shalochatu. You're the famous rebbe of the young children of Klal Yisrael. What are you doing here in the garden? Midwinter vacation? <laughs> who, taught, who gave you off from yeshiva? COVID? What's going on? What are, you, what are you doing here in the garden? Reb Shmuel Bashila tells back to Rav, for 13 years, I taught Torah straight to the young children of Klal Yisrael, and I never was mafsik for a minute. And I forgot the beauty of this garden. So for a moment after 13 years, I stopped just to remind myself of Niflaot Habore of this garden. You know that the garden played a big role in the downfall of Haman, right? You know that Ashverosh had to go out to the beautiful garden and only then come back in. And that was the moment of his af v'chema to blurt out onto Haman. Isn't it enough? Right? He sees Haman falling on Esther HaMalka's bed. And he says, you're here to take my queen in my very house. Off with his head. Hang him. Here's his grandson admiring the garden, remembering the beauty of the garden and how his great-great-grandfather was brought down. He became the Melamde Tinokot Shobet Rabban. Why? Why that job? Why from all jobs that job? And the answer is, says the Medrash Rabban Bereshit Rabban, Hakol Kol Yaakov. As long as the young Cheder children of Klal Yisrael are mitzaf tzifim, as long as you know you walk by the yeshiva and you hear out of the windows, Vayoymer El Asher, and you hear the kids in their seat. Those kids are holding up the world. You need to know that. And as long as those children are mitzaf tzifim, it's like they're chirping. As long as the young ones are chirping Torah, chirping Chumash, chirping Mishnayot, we're untouchable. They're the biggest protection for Klav Yisrael. When they came to Rukhaim Kanievsky and they said, Rukhaim, COVID, COVID. He said, yeah, it's COVID. COVID, no Shaila. You have to put on masks. You got to cut out the weddings. You have to adhere to everything that they're telling us you must adhere. But the Chadarim cannot close. And on one hand they said, what? You're telling us, uh, and then on the other hand, the yeshiva's got, yes. Remember the essentials, even in New York, where they were, uh, I'm being filmed, I can't say what I want to say. But the essentials were left open. Let's just leave it at that. It's interesting what they called the essentials, the liquor stores were left. The essentials were left open. Those children are the essentials of Klal Yisrael. As long as they're mitzaf tzafim, Esaf cannot touch us. As long as those children are mitzaf tzafim Torah, as long as the tinokot shobet rabban are learning, the Torah is protecting us 
from COVID, from Corona, from all the oivim of Klal Yisrael, the sonim of Klal Yisrael. They cannot stop. They can't stop. Amazing. So here's the great grandson of Haman, who's coming now to undo and protect Klal Yisrael from the horrific legend of his great grandfather. So what does he do? He ensures that the Haganah of Klal Yisrael against Esav and Amalek is the strongest possible. I became a Rebbe of Tinokot Shobet Rabban, the insurance plan, the shield of the Jewish people against people like my great-great-grandfather, Haman. Like this, they could never rise up against us again. This is amazing. This is incredible. Reb Shmuel Bar Shilat. And if this is the case, I think there's a beauty here. Haman, like we said before, was all about the month of Adar. Hashem's name backwards. Keeping Hashem in the Hester, in the hidden. Not like the month of Nisan, of Yudke Vavke forwards. And that's why this Reb Shmuel, who taught Tinokot Shobet Rabban, his name was Bar Shelat. We ask what type of name is Shelat. Shelat is Rashi Tevot. Shiviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid. He was Bar Shelat. If you learned the first Halacha in Shulchan Aruch, you learned the first Rama in Shulchan Aruch. Shiviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid. You know what you need to keep in front of your eyes at all times? Yud Ke Vav Ke. Haman was trying to make he vav he yud. Comes his grandson and he says, No, I'm bar shelat. My whole tafkid is to bring shelat. Shiviti Hashem linegdi tamid. Yud ke vav ke. In the proper order in front of the eyes of the children of Klal Yisrael. I'm going to do the opposite to undo what his great grandfather Haman tried to do to Klal Yisrael. Unreal. This is, this is incredible. And that's why, who was the son of Reb Shmuel Bar Shelat? Amar Reb Yehuda Bre Reb Shmuel Bar Shelat. When Reb Shmuel, the son of Shiviti Hashem Lenegi Tamid, when he had a son, you know what he named him? Yehuda. Says the Shalah Kadosh, the name of Yehuda is really the name of Yud Ke Vav Ke with the Dalit to show that this was my Tafkid. My Tafkid is to bring Hashem's name into the world, Big Galui, the opposite of what my great grandfather tried to do. And therefore he names his son Yehuda, Yud Ke Vav Ke with the Dalit. What's the Dalit in the middle? There were two things that Amalek messed up. He messed up the Yud Ke Vav Ke. But he also messed up the Kiseh HaKavod. The Kiseh HaKavod is the Dalid. Chazal tells us, the Shalat tells us that the letter Dalid is the four legs of Kiseh HaKavod. This is Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, and David. David was the Regel Rivi'i. You know what Amalek did? They knocked on the Kiseh HaKavod to knock out the Regel Rivi'i. So that there shouldn't be a Ben David Avdecha, Yavov Yigalenu. They hit on the Kiseh. So he names his son Yehuda to show that, you know what, I'm bringing Shalemut back to everything that my great grandfather tried to destroy. He tried to mess up the name of Hashem. I named my son Yudke Vavke. He tried to mess up the Kiseh Akavod. Yehuda, the Dalit, is the fourth leg that they tried to take away from. He said to be kes, kiya al kesya. That's why he was the one to teach us in the name of Rav. Mishenichnas adar marbim besimcha. You know what the simcha is? That in adar v'nahafoch, who? He tried to take Hashem's name, hey vav, hey yud behester, and we took it. To a Nisan Dika name of Yud, He, Vav, and then Ke. And that's what his great grandson, 
Reb Shmuel Bar Shelat was zoichet to do in his lifetime. Al yedei the tinokot shobet Rabban. Al yedei naming his son Yehuda. Amazing. Look how incredibly connected the ma'amar of every rabbi was, not just to himself, but to his tafkid in the world. He's the one to tell you, Mishinichnas Adar. And I'm telling you, what is there to be happy about? We got the name back. Yeheh Shemeh Rabbah Mevarach. The Shemeh, the Shem Ka, became Rabbah in the month of Adar when Haman was trying to destroy that name. Yeah, this, is, this, is, this is unbelievable. And therefore, Rabotai, I just want to end off with an amazing story and tell you. In this month, the Marbim B'Simcha is taking Hashem's name from the hidden and showing it out Bigalui. And that's why this month is a month of Hester Panim that was destined to bring to a Geulah. And that's why this Adar has the month of this great Purim. That's a holiday that will never be Mitbatel. Because Lehefech, it's the holiday that takes Galut, Hevav Heyud, and turns it into Geulav. And Afochu, it turns it to Yud Kevavke. It brings you to the Nisan. It's really Adar Nisan. It's one Hemshech. It's one month. This is a month that we need a Shibiti Hashem le Negdi Tamid more than ever. Recently I put out a clip on a class that we gave not too long ago about this incredible concept of this slavery that we fell into. The slavery of these cell phones. That when a guy walks into shul, even if the phone is on the table or in his back pocket, Kozman, it's buzzing. Kozman, it's clicking. Kozman, it's beeping. There's no way that someone can pray properly as long as that phone is there in his presence. He has half of his brain or maybe three quarters of his brain on the phone and one quarter he's giving to the tefillah to Hashem. And Borei Olam says, my friend, I don't play second fiddle to anybody. If you're here to pray to me, shut off that phone. Put it in the locker. Keep it outside. And we gave a whole share on this. So I fly out to Miami for a few days. And I stayed in a place called Bell Harbor. Beautiful area over there. Beautiful. And I was asked. So I flew out to Miami for a few days. And I was asked by a good friend of mine. Jonathan Dagme to come with him to different shuls to check out the area, some places to speak in, even to get to know the people. What a beautiful area. Such an achdut down there, a mix of all different people from different walks of life and backgrounds. But everyone loves each other. And it was over there that one morning he decided he wanted to bring me to the Chabad. There's a large, beautiful Chabad building. It's almost a block long. It's like a land house. They have minyanim every 15, 20 minutes. It's amazing. So you can catch a shachrit over there, especially people on vacation. Not everyone's getting up that early. So the minyanim go on and on and on. He wanted to show me the Svaradi minyan that was there in the Chabad because they just started this beautiful kolel. Al a, a great rabbi that they brought from Bnei Brak. You know, tonight we spoke about the Talmud of Bnei Brak. They brought from Bnei Brak, a rabbi mastery, unbelievable, wonderful Tamid Chacham and a koach with people. So he wanted me to meet him. So he brings me to the Chabad and he tells me, 7.45, they're praying Shachrit. I'll meet you there in the morning. I'll introduce you to the rabbi. So I come walking into the Sephardic Minyan in the Chabad building at 7.45, the Tzart Shachrit. As I walk in to the shul, there's a guy there in his talet and tefillin with his hair slicked back on his phone answering emails. I walk into the room, he looks up for his phone a second, he looks at me, he goes, huh? And he drops his phone, and the phone lands on the floor and cracks, a big crack, he showed me the crack, a big crack right going through his screen. And then he looks at me and says, you? What are you doing here in Miami? And I'm like, uh, 
I, I, I'm just here for a few. You know, that was a shalom aleichem. I was just. I'm just here for a few days. He says, "You're not going to believe this." He says, "I just came from Mexico yesterday. Before I left, my son walked up to me and said, Dad, you got to see this clip.'" And he showed me a clip of you, Rabbi, giving a five-minute clip on how terrible it is to be in shul with your talent and tefillin on when you're supposed to be praying. And instead, you're sitting there answering emails right in front of God. What a terrible chutzpah, you said. And my son said, come on, Dad. He's right. Come on, we got to stop this. We got to put the phone out of shul. We got to put the phone in the locker. And I said to my son, come on, I, you know, maybe for you, I'm not that religious. When my factories called me, I got to answer on the spot. I, I, I can't wait for nobody. And my son turned to me and said, Dad, maybe when your factories call and you're in the middle of tefillah, if you would actually have put the phone away, God would have taken care of those problems instead of you. And who would you rather take care of your problems? You or him? He says, he got my, my son got me thinking. But I said to myself, eh, if God wants to take care of my problems, let him show me a sign. He says, I walk in here this morning. I landed in Miami last night. I come in here to this shul to pray. I never pray here, he tells me. I came in here to this shul to pray because I heard there's a new kolel. I wanted to see it. I come walking in. I put on my talent, put on my tefillin, and my phone starts going crazy. I pick up the phone, and instead of praying, I start answering emails. And just then, you walk in. He says, I saw you, and I thought I saw a ghost, he tells me. He dropped the phone. He says, the phone cracked. He says, but now God showed me. I'm never going to bring this in again. I'm going to realize that he's right there in front of my face at all times. Shiviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid. He's looking right at you. Wouldn't it be decent just to look back at him instead of looking down and ignoring Borei Olam? This is the first, first Halachan Shulchan Aruch. Look how this rabbi spent his life the great grandson of Haman, Reb Shmuel Bar what? What was his last? What was his father's name? Bar Shilat, Shilat, Rashi Tevot Shiviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid. Thank you for listening. What a month, huh? What a month! What a month! We have a month, a beautiful month coming. Klal Yisrael. Ah, Shiviti Hashem. I know it got very hot in here. Wow. Other <laughs> now you have to shop. Now you gotta give it. How do we shut this thing off? Yes, yeah, yeah, no, no, which one is it? Is that the guy?